the Italian legend in one of the best victories of his career. A brave maneuver, a descent of madmen, and a show of heart and courage were the ingredients of a Milan San Remo for the history books. Do you want to know what happened in La Primavera of 2018? Then follow my wheel and I'll tell you. Milan San Remo, the first monument of the season, a race of almost 300 kilometers that is usually dominated by sprinters, except on occasions, as we'll see soon, in which some super class as in the case of the brilliant cyclist Vincenzo Nibali, skips the script to give us incredible races that are delight for fans. If you like our topic today, subscribe to help us bring you more stories like this. The race began following the planned and foreseeable script, with the formation of the breakaway in the first few kilometers, which will allow the peloton to roll calmly during the first kilometers. A group of nine cyclists, formed by men like Dennis Van Winden, Guy Sagiv, Matteo Bono, Mirko Maestri, Lorenzo Rota, or Jacobo Mosca, tried to escape from far away. Despite the very long race that was still ahead, the bad weather conditions and the interests of the different teams with aspirants to win caused that the nine escaped riders never got to have comfortable time on the peloton. They reached a relatively quick seven-minute lead. But at that point, Dimension Data Team decided to take place Vermont to pull the group, a task that would soon be joined by his former Quick Step teammates. In any case, things remained this way, with the escapees who knew they were sentenced and the peloton letting them do just enough until the arrival of the Torchino Pass, the highest point of the race, with its little more than 500 meters above sea level. As soon as they set a descending course towards the Mediterranean, the peloton put one more point of speed and, almost without realizing it, approached the border of the minute with respect to the nine men who resisted in the lead. And for the party to be round, the sun rose from behind the clouds that had been unleashing its fury on the peloton during the 240 kilometers already traveled, in an almost perfect representation of what this race is, the passage from winter to spring. A crash from Simon Clark and Daniel McClay was the first serious shock in the peloton during the descent of Capo Cervo. In any case, the peloton was accelerating until, with only the Cipresa and the Poggio di San Remo to ascend, it threw itself on top of the escape riders to finish the neutralization with 30 kilometers to go. Milan San Remo, the 300 kilometer race that opens the monument campaign every year, really started again on the first ramps of the Cipresa led by Sky and Grupama FDJ, who imposed a really demanding pace. The kilometers were hurting the legs of the cyclists, and the first of the favorites to show that La Clasiquisima is considered a monument for its difficulty was the debutant Marcel Quitel, who couldn't keep up with the peloton. As every year since 1996, either because the pace of British and French were excessive, or because the forces were already very fair, Nobody jumped in Cipresa, and the peloton traveled group on its summit, located 21 kilometers from the finish line. All the sprinters survived in the peloton, except Kittle, and that caused teams such as Lotto Sudal, Confidis, or EF Education First to tighten the pace to the maximum on the approach to the Poggio. Various trains tried to occupy the entire width of the road with an obvious double intention. On the one hand, to maintain the formation and therefore to protect their bosses, and on the other, to gain the front position and therefore to send to rear positions the men interested in the distant attack in the last capo of the day. Then came one of the most tense moments of the race, Mark Cavendish's tremendous impact on a road sign. The Brit started with the broken rib, according to the official version of the team and the rider, and was shooting out spectacularly on the handlebars of the bike, running out of chances of victory and adjusting things quite a bit at the front of the peloton. It was the moment of truth, the moment of the killers. Always attentive, but without having taken any prominence until that moment, it was Vincenzo Nibali, Barre Merida, who, giving continuity to an initial movement of Bodnar, bravely went for glory on the final ramps of the Poggio. The shark, attracted as always by the smell of blood, opened a beautiful gap just before the summit and launched as one of the best riders of the international peloton towards the winding and treacherous descent that leads to the two flat kilometers that lead to Via Roma in San Remo. 
Bahrain Merida cyclist gave us one of the best descents of this season. With his exquisite style, he negotiated the corners reminding us of a MotoGP rider, launching himself like a madman towards glory in the finish line of the Italian city. Risking his life, he managed to maintain his short distance until he reached the plane. It was going to be an incredible two kilometers. Behind, it was Kivitowski and Van Avermaet, who in first person had to lead the hunt that was soon joined by a Peter Sagan, who was left with the same surprised face as his two rivals when, three kilometers from the finish line, he saw Matteo Trenton pass like a howitzer in search of the wake of the shark. Barely 10 seconds separated Nibali from the peloton of the base of the Poggio. It seemed like it was going to be an impossible mission for the cyclists of Messina. Trenton was placed between the shark and the group, in which the first doubts began to appear, but the former quick step couldn't maintain his bet and was neutralized one kilometer to the finish line. But where Trenton sank, with Mitchelton, Scott, and quick step throwing their sprinters at full speed, the shark emerged as a superhero. With a superhuman resistance, which barely had a dozen meters left, enough to take a beautiful triumph forged, as we fan like in a brave and determined movement in the Poggio Pass, all where it was expected. He's within sight to the finish line. Arno De Mar, Caleb Ewan opens up his sprint. It's a sprint for second place though, as Vincenzo Nibali takes his first ever victory in Milan San Roma. San Roma making... A trademark triumph, attacking and not looking back. Attacking and not thinking about the consequences. Legs and heart. Passion. A way of understanding cycling that led this great Italian rider, winner of the Giro, Tour, and the Vuelta, to add his second consecutive monument after Lombardi in 2017, becoming, without any doubt, the best Italian cyclist of the 21st century. Thank you for coming this far. Subscribe and like, and if you want to continue enjoying with stories of the best cyclists in the world, don't miss this.